Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie and if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you're back, of course, welcome back to you as well. I hope you're all doing really, really well tonight. We are going to settle in for a little whip and chat together. And if you're not familiar with what that means, whip stands for work in progress and chat, well, they're pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so feel free to go ahead and pull out whatever crafting project or house project or commuting project uh, that you might have on the docket for the day. And let's chat and catch up a little bit. So how are you all doing tonight? Like I said, I hope you're doing really, really well. Um, just to give you the quick stats, I am working on Dragon Attack from Diamond Art Club. Um, the colors in it are really beautiful, but my goodness, the confetti is unreal. <laughs> um, I am using my brand new, camera won't do it justice, pen from Lazy River Wood Turning from their most recent drop. This is one of the bloom blanks that has flowers in the middle. They're really tricky to turn. Matt over at Lazy River does an incredible job and stuff helps out of course over there as well. And I just, as soon as I saw this one, I fell in love. It has these really pretty purple flowers in it. And I love the hybrids that the wood uh, kind of wraps around in various places and is asymmetrical. So love this pen. I was also lucky enough to snag this mini pen from that drop. And while these aren't normally my colors, this is inspired by, and I totally see it, um, the graphic novel, The Killing Joke which is also adapted into a movie. Um, and that's a Batman and the Joker uh, comic book. And my husband and I like have a lot of associations with that because we saw like the premiere of the animated movie at Comic-Con several years back. It just, I don't know. I And my husband's a huge Batman fan. So I thought, well, this is gonna be kind of in honor of him. So really lucky I was able to snag those. Uh, I'm also using my giant Muni Made tray, which I just, I have other trays that from other companies that I love, but I keep reaching for these when it comes to, you know, anything with color blocking. And I just I like the colors that I have it in. This minder is from Agnes Little Minders. I just thought it's a dragon and the colors match. So this is what we're going with today. <laughs> and I am using... Not your mama's mud, which actually this is my first time using this pen. So let's load it up. It's so light and comfortable. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are doing really, really well. I feel like, yeah, I'll just start up front with just saying this. I feel so behind in all of the things. And I I like want to apologize and just sort of explain a little bit. Um, this needs a little more washi tape, which by the way, sorry, before I get into that, if you ever have a multi-placer that is not sitting tight in your pen, which actually that's not a bad thing. I appreciate that pen turners, um, don't make, you know, these whole super, you know, impossible to like get ends, uh, multi-placers in and out of, um, like this wasn't tight. And so I just pulled it out and wrapped a little bit of washi tape around the uh, end of the multi-placer and now it's, you know, it's pretty snug. And also it'll still pull out without, you know, doing any damage to the pen. Okay, so as I said, I'm feeling behind on everything and uh, like going really wildly back and forth between feeling guilty about it and feeling like, no, 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 I tell myself to give other people grace all the time and I have you guys telling me to give myself grace so I need to like actually practice what I preach. And that means that <laughs> it's okay that my time with family uh, took precedence over uh, watching YouTube videos and responding to comments on my videos. But uh, especially if you're new here, you might not, you know, realize that, you know, I have, I had had, my mom was in town for a little over two weeks. We hadn't seen her in six months. She was able to come out and stay with us for a couple weeks and we got so much done and just really, really loved having that time together uh, since we live across the country from each other. And the pandemic really threw a wrench in everything, including 
our ability to see our family that lives across the country. So, um, but the reality is I am further behind on responding to comments on videos and on Instagram. I'm further behind than I've ever been, ever. <laughs> and I, you know, I just want to apologize because I know that many of you are used to me responding to comments just with a really personal and thoughtful response and that it you know, normally doesn't take <laughs> multiple days, like at most usually a couple of days. So I'm going to do my best to get caught up as much as I can. Um, but also I might just not be able to respond to everyone's comment this time, but uh, I'll leave a heart so that you know that I've seen it. I know you guys will, you know, that most of you will completely understand and not hold that against me. I just, since it's such a deviation from my norm, I wanted to say something about it. And I don't like, <laughs> I don't like that I can't respond personally and thoughtfully to everyone because I love, love, love the just really wonderful community of people here. And I love getting to interact with you there and getting to know you, you know, through comments and whatnot. So <laughs> it feels like once again, so many things to catch up on. Um, my... Well, Jessica and I announced finally all the things about our event. So thank you so much for the really overwhelmingly positive and excited response to that. It really seems like this is an area of art that we're not the only ones that are really interested in and feel like, you know, we've never seen an event dedicated to something like this. So I'm really, really, really excited for what's to come and I hope that um, the announcement video and the graphics that we shared on Instagram you know we tried to make it as not confusing <laughs> as possible <laughs> um, because we we know it's a little bit unconventional because we're doing like a video series and then like there's an eight week gap and then we're doing like this bonus video and we don't want you guys to forget about um, the event, but we just, we really wanted to make it feel less intimidating for you to go out and get a custom, like, and that whole process, like, I, I don't know about you guys, I was hesitant to even, like, really move forward with the idea of having an event that, like, related to customs, because to me, the idea of ordering a custom was so intimidating, and I was like, I just don't, you know, I don't know where to start with, like, where are good places to find this artwork? Where are, like, companies that are reputable to purchase from, where both the quality is going to be good, and hopefully I'm not giving money to a company that is also selling stolen artwork, even though the, even if I'm doing everything right and the artwork I'm sending them is public domain, you know, and then how do I pick what size I want? <laughs> and how do I even know, like, is this even an image that's going to translate well as a diamond painting? There were just so many questions for me, but then where it landed was if I have all of these questions and I feel like I'm a somewhat experienced diamond painter and I've tried like a lot of different things in the diamond painting world. Like if it's confusing to me, I have to think that it's confusing or just in overwhelming or intimidating to others. And I love making things feel accessible to others. Um, and so I just decided to dive in head first. <laughs> so I have a couple of different customs uh, to share with you guys and some prepackaged kits as well. And I am so excited, I think there is like a slim possibility that I will finish this kit, Dragon Attack, before our video series starts. Um, and if not, I'll just work on more than one kit at once. Um, that's fine. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you didn't have the chance to take a quick peek at the description in our announcement videos, there are discount codes from various shops that are partnering with us and, and agreed to offer discounts to you guys. There's both accessory companies and diamond painting companies. Um, so 
definitely go and check that out. Or, you know, if you want a little sneak peek, some of those codes won't start until May 1st when our collab officially starts, but you can still go get a sneak peek, <laughs> start window shopping, have stuff in your cart ready to order. Um, yeah, so obviously really excited about that. Um, as far as things not necessarily diamond painting related, lots and lots of lots and lots, words are hard, of updates on just things going on at home. So Connor went back to school. He is in kindergarten, in a special ed kindergarten class. Um, they went back in person for full day school on Monday, so a week ago when you're seeing this video, because I'm recording on Sunday night, and uh, this will go up tomorrow, Monday. Um, so Connor went back to school on Monday. He had a really, really, really good week. Um, we were really prepared for it to be a dumpster fire because... I mean, it's a huge change in routine. He's been doing remote learning at home with us for a year, an entire year. And then we're sending him back to school in person and for full day, which our district, they, I don't know, in the U.S. at least, it's it's kind of a, um, what's the word? Um, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, some schools are doing full day kinder and some schools do half day, like a.m. p.m. schedule where your kid is only in kindergarten for like three hours, four hours. Um, our school district piloted, like tested out full day kindergarten at two schools, two of the elementary schools in our district last year. Um, and with the idea that as long as it went well, they would launch full day kinder district-wide, we have like 20 elementary schools in our school district, um, launched that district-wide then this school year. Then the pandemic happened, blah, 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 with hybrid learning. It's not like they were sitting on Zoom for an entire full day of school. But when they went back in person, it was like, and we're going back full day, which for Connor is 7.50 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. It's a long day. So we just didn't know how it was going to go and how he was going to handle it. He did amazing. But I'm not going to like get ahead of myself and feel like all smug and relieved because historically, week one's not the hard week. <laughs> week two, like week two of a change of routine or week two, like back to school after a break, that's the one that's the dumpster fire. <laughs> um, because it's like... I have to think it's like the novelty has worn off and it's like, okay, we've had a weekend and then, oh wait, I have to go back and this is like the thing we're doing now. And then, you know, it's got like a revolt on our hands. <laughs> so, but you know, um, there's been a little bit of a wrench thrown into that for us. Uh, Saturday morning, Connor woke up with a full on runny nose and a super low grade fever, like, 99.3 or 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like not even technically a low grade fever, but that's like a degree or two warmer than he normally runs. So um, he still has that runny nose today and just, you know, said he's just not feeling very well. And so, hello, no, I'm not sending my kid to school with a runny nose and even though he, he only had the low grade fever for a little bit yesterday like no i'm not sending him to school in the middle of a pandemic when he's got a runny nose and like a tiny bit of a cough that i'm it i'm nearly positive is related to him having a super runny nose but hating to blow his nose and it's yeah sorry that's kind of gross but um no like i'm going to <laughs> be like a responsible parent and not send my child to school when he's sick. Now, okay, I should like, that was maybe not the most fair statement to make about being a responsible parent because I am fortunate enough to be a stay at home mom. And that may have come off wrong to parents that are single parents or uh, both parents work or any other number of circumstances where it's not as quite as simple as that so um sorry about that <laughs> that was a little bit of a careless statement all this to say 
I have the option and the opportunity to keep Connor at home with me when he is sick or questionably sick. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, I'll have to call his, you know, the school and see like, what is their policy? I know that they have the list of symptoms and like, okay, these are the things like you have to have like a doctor's note. If they have certain symptoms, like you have to have them seen by a healthcare provider, um, to either test for COVID or rule out COVID. And then you have to bring that doctor's note back to the school before your child is allowed to be back in school. There's like, it's a whole graph, like it's a whole flow chart of like, does your child have these low risk symptoms? If so, you have to do X, Y, and Z. If they have this high risk symptom, you have to do this, this, and this. And then if the, it's just, it's a whole thing. I appreciate the level of detail and, and the fact that it's a flow chart. It literally works perfectly for my very type A, very organized brain. It's like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. You give me a flow chart, great, I will follow it. I'm a real follower. I am a and the oldest child, like in every sense of the stereotype. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, all this to say, I, I really hope that he wakes up feeling better tomorrow. Either way, he's not going to school. Um, but I don't want him to like be so under the weather that he's missing. I don't want him to miss like a whole week of school if we can help it. Um, it just, I guess, goes to show that like the kids' immune systems are probably garbage after a year of being pretty locked down. Um, and here's the crazy thing. It's not like his school is being all la-di-da about uh, hygiene and like safety and cleanliness. Like, no, all the kids have to be masked all day except when they're eating. Uh, they wash their hands and sanitize frequently. Um, they still have the plexiglass around their desks. Um, you know, they are taking so many precautions. I, you know, I'm not faulting the school. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so anyway, send good vibes for that. Um, I have my second COVID shot on Tuesday, which again, this is going up tomorrow, which is Monday. So for you guys, I'm getting my COVID shot tomorrow. It's my, it's my second one, as I said. And I really had actually wanted to plan to go live tomorrow night to get to chat and catch up with all of you. But round two of the COVID shot absolutely kicked my husband's butt, like down and out for like a day and a half. <laughs> Uh, so like Adam is already planning to potentially take Tuesday and or Wednesday off if need be, like depending on how hard it hits me. Anecdotally, I'm hearing that it's hitting younger people harder and I'm 32. So, and my husband is a couple years older than me. So I just, I am hoping for the best, but quite frankly, anticipating the worst. So I don't want to commit to doing a live with you guys on Tuesday night if um, I might be just like passed out in my bed. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you guys want to watch me sleep. And if you do, I don't really want to know that. <laughs> and it's not going to happen anyway. Mm, that got weird. Um, anyway, <laughs> so wish me luck really 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 hope that i don't have a bad reaction because like i got stuff to do <laughs> like a diamond painting to do i would love to be able to knock this out before may 1st if possible but i think that that is just not really likely because i'm not even halfway done with this kit and there's so much confetti um yeah so that's what's going on with Adam and with Connor. Well, Adam is actually, he's up in LA again. He'll be home shortly. So I'll be um, pausing and then coming back. But uh, he's been doing a lot like with film stuff lately and made a conversation um, that we're trying to keep like an open ongoing conversation just about the pace of things because he's been doing so much more um, with screenwriting and directing and filming and working with so many different people. And I'm 
really, really excited for him that lots of things are coming up and like some of these things have been paid gigs and screenwriting is Adam's dream. Like that's why we moved out to California. Um, very, very fortunate that he does have a day job. And so he's doing all of the screenwriting and directing um, and producing, you know, all these things on the side, on top of his normal 40 plus hour work week. And it just, this, this year in 2021 in particular, it really picked up and it just started to feel like um, the pace of it was unsustainable, both for like the sake of his mental health and just for the sake of like our family and our family's time together. So uh, he was really, really receptive and like wanted to make sure that we're sort of keeping a finger on the pulse of things and not letting, you know, the kind of frenetic pace that comes with the lead up to a shoot um, and all of that, trying not to let that become our new norm uh, because that's kind of what started to feel like. It felt like there were just lots of projects back to back to back to back, never a chance to come up for air as opposed to in the past, he's only done one or two projects a year and so that's much more manageable to have like two or three weeks where it's just really hectic leading up to the actual filming date um but having it going like all the time is just again it just sort of feels like it's not good for him and (laughs) for him to just be running himself ragged and it does take away from um just family time so Uh, I'm grateful that he's just been really receptive to that. And he is always like, family comes first. And I don't want this to be a thing that makes it a hardship for you or for the kids. So, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that he, (laughs) speak of the devil, I'm pretty sure that he just got home. So I'm just going to go chat with him for a few minutes and um, I'll hop back on and we'll we'll keep chatting because I have lots more to share with you guys. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, yep, Adam is home. <laughs> he was just telling me the like funniest story about uh, this podcast he was listening to on the way home. I think it's called what is it called? Heavyweights. Yeah. Heavyweight. Yeah, heavyweight. Um, and I'm like trying to remember if I ever saw like this commercial, but like if you live in the states, did you ever see the random red couch McDonald's? commercial (laughs) there's apparently like a really funny story behind that and apparently it was such so poorly received (laughs) that uh like they had to take it off of youtube because people kept thumbs downing it so much and downvoting it so much (laughs) so i think it's you know i think you can find it on youtube now but like it's yeah anyway that was really really random but um i just thought you know most other people have better memories than i do so I'm curious, do you remember the random red couch McDonald's ad campaign? <laughs> it was really bad. Adam played the commercial for me and I was like, wow, someone greenlit that <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> and lots of people got fired because of it. Um, yeah, anyway. So his, uh, his thing went well and he's going to go try to, like, he's making crazy fast progress on the Assassin's Creed game that he's playing. Speaking of video games, well, if you didn't know, I I consider myself like also a gamer though since picking up diamond painting. I yikes, has it been a year since I've pl- like really sat down and played a video game? Pretty sure it has. But um Diamond Art Club has been uh, this this connects, I promise. Stick with me here. <laughs> Diamond Art Club like a couple of times a week lately has been putting up these um polls in their VIP group, which, you know, I think you just have to have purchased from Diamond Art Club to be a part of their VIP Facebook group. But they're actually posting polls in that group of artists that they license from and all the different pieces that they're looking at potentially turning into diamond paintings. And they're asking the community to vote on what their favorites are so that, you know, they can potentially prioritize those. And they just put up today as a, you know, Sunday, um, their poll for goodness i'm gonna forget her name um the artist of the um time to spare the rapunzel tangled uh piece that was just released 
last weekend, the weekend before, um, that artist. That's the first piece that they've licensed from this artist. And so the poll today was like all of her work and oh my gosh, I am in love. I just want all of it. But how does this tie back to video games? Okay, tucked in her artwork is so much fandom artwork, like references to different book series and TV shows and anime and video games. Oh my gosh. I, my jaw dropped when I saw that one of the pieces that was in there to vote on was of the main character of one of my favorite video games of all time. And that is Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, which is an absolutely incredible, incredible game. And I really want to replay it, but um, if I play video games, it takes away from my diamond painting time. I don't tend to play short video games. Like that's like a 40, 50 hour game if you're gonna do like the side quests and stuff. And I just, I, right now, like I'm thoroughly enjoying diamond painting and YouTube and all of those things. And I can't quite pull myself away to do, go back to video games. But seeing that artwork and it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. I really, really, really hope that Diamond Art Club does in fact license that particular piece to turn into a diamond painting, even though I have to imagine that's so, so much more niche than, you know, the Disney and the Harry Potter references and stuff that was in her artwork, which I'm so curious about that. I'm so, so curious about that because my understanding, and I to be honest, disclaimer up front, I don't know how much of this has been said by Diamond Art Club and how much is speculation from people because if you haven't noticed, people often like to use their speculations and talk about it like it's gospel truth. Um, <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, Diamond Art Club discontinued most of Mandy Manzano's like obviously Disney inspired work. Um, and you know, the rumors are swirling that like Disney had something to do with it directly. Um, I don't know if anyone knows. I know that Disney is a bear when it comes to copyright and licensing, but I, it's interesting to me that they were able to keep up some of Mandy Manzano's obviously Disney inspired pieces. And not only that, I was shocked when I saw this new artist's work, the Time to Spare piece go up, because I thought, in my brain, that's no less <laughs> obviously Disney than Mandy Manzano's princess panels, like the tall banners that have like almost all been discontinued. So I am so curious to know like where, <laughs> like, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm just so curious to know, like, where is that line? <laughs> like, what makes certain things okay and certain things not? And even just looking at, um, you know, all the art that they had up to vote on today, I was like, there is so much fandom in here. Like, are, is this all above board? And I mean, Diamond Art Club does things above board, but... I just am so curious if any of that is actually something that we're going to be able to see as diamond paintings. Um, I really, really hope so, given that they showed it to us, but we will see. We will see. I do know that back when I worked on the piece Snow Deer from Safina Art, JoJo's art's sister, in fact, we talk about the amount of talent in that family and they apparently have another sibling that is extremely artistically inclined um share that wealth please with the rest of the human population no no i love it um anyway safina art when i had worked on snow deer i had messaged with her a little bit because i had tagged her you know when i was putting up progress pictures and finished pictures on instagram and we just chatted a little bit about, you know, she was so excited to be licensed with Diamond Art Club and had that piece as well as uh, the Alice, the teacup partial, um, or not teacup, in a bottle, the Alice in a bottle partial. And I had asked her, I said, you know, because Diamond Art Club had named those pieces, like they didn't name 
snow deer, what Safina Art calls snow deer, which has Bambi in the name. Safina Art is l like a contractor, or a, an independent contractor. Like she's an artist that works with Disney. Like they contract with her. Words are hard. It's late. <laughs> it's late. Um, so like she's doing everything above board with Disney, but it's interesting that it apparently just gets weird when another company is looking at licensing her work to turn into diamond paintings and they can't call it Disney. Anyway, when I was chatting with her and asked like, oh, you know, will you be sending more pieces to them? You know, do you think you'll have any of your, you know, of course I'm asking about The Little Mermaid because that's one of my favorite movie Disney movies and that sort of thing. And she said, well, Diamond Art Club asked me to send them just um, non-fandom work for the moment. That was back in... January. So, I mean, things could change. You know, maybe they worked something out with Disney, but this is 100% speculation on my part. Please do not take anything that I say as the absolute, like, truth. <laughs> just, just my curiosity that all stems from the poll that Diamond Art Club just put up <laughs> from an artist, and most of the artwork in there was fandom related. But I'm excited. I don't know how like soon in the production, like how far in the production process they necessarily are with those pieces, but I really love that they're um, soliciting feedback and people's opinions so that they can try to bring artwork to the community that people want to see. Um, I'm, yeah, I really, I'm impressed with Diamond Art Club doing that actually. So. If you're not a part of their VIP Facebook group and you like Diamond Art Club and want to see like what they're doing and um, stay up to date, like they post a lot of sneak peeks, they answer questions freely in there and that sort of thing. It's been a really resourceful group to be a part of. So I, yeah, I'd say go check it out. Um, if I remember, I'll link it in the description box below. But, okay, I'm almost done with this section. We'll see if I can finish, like, I have one more section in this row just right here, and I would love to knock that out tonight. Um, I was in a crafting, like, Zoom call earlier this morning, and that ended up going on for, like, three hours. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I diamond painted, like, the entire time, and I haven't sat down and diamond painted for that long in ever, <laughs> unless it's after my kids go to bed. But when my mom was in town, I barely did any diamond painting. As I mentioned in my last whip and chat, like I just, it went on the back burner and that was okay. That's what I wanted it to do because I wanted to focus on spending time with my mom. I wanted to um, get lots of things done and we just kind of, we were on a roll. <laughs> so speaking of things that I've gotten done, um, Gosh, I feel like I managed to check so much off my list while my mom was here. So, and for those of you that have asked, like, my mom is the one that is like, okay, I need projects to do. I'm not like, you know, cracking the whip while she's here. In fact, she's usually one, the one that is kind of nudging me. She's like, can you, can you give me a job? Can you <laughs> give me a job? Hey, didn't you say you wanted to do this? Can, can I do that? Or can we do that? <laughs> um, anyway. So the biggest thing that I got accomplished was um, I like got my garage like 75% like reorganized and um, put back together. <laughs> so there was just stuff everywhere. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't quite like all set up to get rid of all the baby stuff that we have in there. Like we have a crib and we have a high chair and like a baby bathtub and stuff. And I just, I hadn't, I'd like to contact like a local women's shelter or something like that to see, um, you know, if they work with like teen moms or something like that, or if they need supplies, I don't know. I just want it to, I'd really love for it to go to someone in need and be able to be like, okay, you know, you're having a baby and you don't have any supplies or anything here. I have like the baby starter kit. <laughs> I even have like a breast pump that I barely used. So, um, I, anyway, so all the baby stuff is still in there, but I was able to get it a lot more like organized and off to the side. And then we have shelves, like we put up shelves finally in the garage in the fall, 
but I had just sort of haphazardly like put the totes, various totes and boxes up on the shelves without any real organization to them. And it was just driving me kind of nuts because like I didn't even really decorate for the seasons in the past year, partially because like, you know, depression and the pandemic, I just didn't feel like it. But also because I just, I'd go out in my garage and just look at these rows and rows of totes and go, I don't know where my fall decorations are. I don't know where my Christmas decorations are other than the tree and the ornaments. Like, and I don't feel like digging through to find all of it right now. So I feel like I can already hear some of you like shouting the suggestion to put labels on the containers and totes. I did <laughs> when we tackled the project while my mom was here. I like, I literally moved both of our cars out of the garage <laughs> so I'd have the whole garage to work with and pulled down virtually every tote, opened every one of them back up, took two trunk loads of stuff to our don local donation center to get rid of because I was, I was going through stuff. I was like, I don't like the steak core anymore. I don't need it or, you know. Um, so it was nice to do like a clean out. And then I just reorganized everything and made it make sense. <laughs> I'd also bought several like larger totes that would fit the shelving space more efficiently. So I should have taken before and after pictures because it is kind of drastic <laughs> in a good way. So that took me a few hours um, on like Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning. I feel like so much lighter having that done. Um, I know where everything is now and I you know, have labels on almost every single tote. There's one big section of the garage that I did not get the chance to get to cleaning out because, you know, I'm going through because you guys, three hours later, I was pooped. <laughs> I needed to go take a break and eat a snack. Like, no, I was, I was done. I was like, look, it's the, the, what's left is manageable for me to do, you know, when my mom is gone. So, um, it felt good to get that done. I got my desk put together. I will, once I get it looking a little bit cuter and happier, um, I'll take pictures and I'll share it with you guys. <laughs> it's really nice to have that space. Um, even though it's not a huge desk because we don't have a lot of space for it and it's kind of in the middle of our living space. Um, so when I'm working on larger projects like this, I tend to prefer coming over to the kitchen table, but like my desk is 15 feet that way. So it's not hard to just shift stuff over. And it's nice because I freed up like all of my crafting stuff that I wanted to have handy was taking up a kitchen counter and we don't have much in the way of kitchen counter space either. So I was like, I need, if I set up the desk, then I can move my crafting stuff off the kitchen counter where it's been living for months, get that kitchen counter back, and then I'll have space to clean out my kitchen cabinets, which we also did when my mom was here. I got new kitchen dishes, which was a belated birthday gift um, to, well, I mean, for my husband to me, but I basically told him, I'm like, can this be my birthday gift this year? <laughs> that was this past November. It was six months ago. But everything just had like a domino effect. I was like, I can't... I can't get new dishes because I need to clean out the kitchen cabinets first. And I can't clean out the kitchen cabinets until I have more kitchen counter space to work with. And I, I uh, won't have more kitchen counter space until I set up my desk so that I can put the stuff that's on the kitchen counter on the desk. And I can't set up my desk until we go through the kids' toys and make their toy area that's near the desk not as bonkers. and. I can't go through the toy stuff. Like it just, it literally, like that is the domino effect of how my, my brain works. And just like, it feels very like if you give a mouse a cookie, but I, I'm trying to figure out like, where was the ending point? Whatever it was, it was the garage. It was, I can't, it, it landed in, but I can't do this until my garage is not crazy. And I can't make my garage organize and make sense until my mom is here because I can't, I couldn't, I knew it was going to take me hours and I didn't want to do it after my kids go to bed. And I can't do it in the middle of the day because 
I'm a stay-at-home mom, I'm keeping an eye on the kids. And, well, technically I could have done it on a weekend, but like, no, <laughs> my weekends are my time with my husband and time to like just be off. And I just decided I'm just gonna wait till my mom is here. <sighs> you might think I'm a little, <laughs> a little nutty for that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so we got so much done. Um, I do need to figure out what my seating situation is going to be over by my desk. Now, the desk that I got, I got, um, it was a Christmas gift from my mom. Um, it was a Black Friday deal from Michael's, a crafting store in the U.S. And it was a really, really, really good deal. And the size was, is perfect for the space we have for it and all of that. Um, it came with a little stool and like, look, <laughs> like I am not a small person, like a little wobbly itty bitty stool, like is not going to be comfortable for me sitting down and wanting to do long sessions of diamond painting. <laughs> so, I mean, I could just drag over a chair from the kitchen table when I want to sit there. Um, that might be what I need to do, I suppose, because there's not really enough space to get like a really big, comfy, ergonomic office chair or gaming chair or something like that. Like there's not space for that. So I don't know if there's maybe like a slightly more compact, but still comfortable chair that I could set up over there. I'll have to look into it. Um, but at least it's a it's a cute spot for me to have my crafting stuff and my diamond painting stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to making that feel a little more, I don't know, me. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was such a productive couple of weeks with having my mom here. And um, like, <laughs> so we're both really, sentimental people and usually like when I drop her off at the airport and say goodbye like of course there's tears because I'm a really empathetic I'm a highly highly empathetic person um and I you know it's it stinks to live across the country from someone that you love dearly and I love my family dearly <laughs> um and you know, though, with her being here for over two weeks this time and knowing that she and my dad are coming out in June, just a couple of months away, neither of us cried when we said goodbye. And I was like, are we robots now? <laughs> and we're like, no, I think it's because really, even though we were loving the time together, like just over two weeks, that's a long time to spend with someone where like she was staying with us. We were together virtually 24-7. Um, I mean, sleep and then I, you know, occasionally run errands solo, but, um, I think she was ready <laughs> to like get back to being with my dad and get back to her routine and a bed that's not on a sleep sofa. And, you know, I was ready to get back some of my diamond painting time and <laughs> just a little bit slower pace, you know, keeping up that pace of just doing lots of projects and lots of things like... I was surprised I kept it up for two weeks. <laughs> By the end of that second week, I was like, Mom, I just, I'm fried. I'm over it. <laughs> We've gotten so much done. Like, I, I'm done. <laughs> so I'm so grateful for that time. Like, please do not get me wrong at all. What is happening here? Is that a piece of washi tape? That's weird. Um, really, really grateful for the time, but also it has been nice to sort of feel like we're settling back <laughs> into our respective rhythms. So um, let me grab a quick drink of water because I'm about to cough again otherwise. <laughs> so as far as things that I have coming this week to share with you guys, um, I have... I have a post review of, let me see, I put up the post review for Saltwater. I did a post review for Deer and Delicate that I'll be sharing with you guys. Um, I have any number of unboxings that I could do. I just have to decide which I want to do. <laughs> um, and I wanna plan ahead uh, and make sure that the pace of everything is gonna work with my 
series with Jessica. Uh, we're doing videos like alternating on our channels and they'll like, I think our videos are gonna go up on Saturday. Yeah, they're gonna go up on Saturdays. So the first Saturday will be over on her channel on May 1st. So I have a little bit of time before my first video is gonna go up. We already mapped out all the topics and everything. So that's gonna hopefully have a helpful flow and, and all of that. Um, but I'm anxious to get into, I have like my customs that have come in and I'm so anxious to share them with you. I'm so excited. Um, so we'll see when I get to those. Um, and I've been mulling over and I really, really, really want to do, I know it's been done before, but I've had people asking me specifically about it. Um, I am working on, like I'm in the brainstorming phase of a just a total beginner's guide to diamond painting. Um, because I've had a lot of, I guess some people that are beginners to diamond painting are finding my channel, which I love, but I don't really have like just a really basic general um, how to die, like how to diamond paint, like just the very, very basics. So I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I kind of like, I have so many ideas and I have kind of the energy uh, an excitement for it that I kind of want to make that happen in the next couple weeks, but uh, we'll see because I want to make sure I'm also dedicating the brain power to the collab that I want to. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Like I said, you know, I've point when people have asked, I've pointed them to like, you know, Rachel Ray, Miss Crochet and Coffee, Tiny Worlds of Wonder to be like, these are fantastic creators that I know have. <laughs> like really good beginner's guides. Um, but since people are, you know, asking in my comments, I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll do my take on it and maybe I will share things in a way that, I don't know, you know, the ways that different people um, present things and the things that they feel like are important info to share, like that varies so much from person to person. And so I have to imagine that like it could only be helpful like even if other people have tackled this particular topic before um like it's okay to do my take on it as well <laughs> um can you tell that i'm still a little bit gun shy about uh doing anything that might come off as though i'm like copying other people <laughs> um yeah so Lots of fun things coming down the pipe. And I have lots to share about Micah had his um, preschool assessment with our school district. To be honest, that's a much, much longer story and everything is still uh, a little bit up in the air on it. So I don't really wanna get into it right now because I've been chatting for quite a while and I'm about to wrap up. That'll be something I go to go into more detail on probably next week in the whip and chat um the assessment went well i it was the same preschool team that evaluated connor when connor turned three and i really respect their opinions and i'm grateful for the services that they provide with the school district and i'm hoping since micah's assessment was a couple weeks ago that um, we'll be hearing from them soon to set up like an IEP meeting where they'll go over all of the, you know, results and kind of what they're recommending for services. But like I said, that's just all a little bit more detailed and complex and it's a little emotional to like get into right now. But um, just in case you guys were wondering, because I know I had mentioned that to you guys before, um, we did have that and it did go well, and I'll have, have more to share next week for sure. Um, also, <laughs> another update, I guess this is just, you know, we're at the end of the whip and chat. I'm giving you little life updates. So the cut that I had gotten on this knuckle, which if you're new here, I have lots of new faces, um, I had like really gashed my knuckle on um, when I was cleaning out the inside of a wine glass back around Thanksgiving. 
this past Thanksgiving. I was not, I had not been drinking at all. I was trying to do a nice thing and clean up after my husband. <laughs> and I was, I don't know, I guess I just pushed too hard when I was cleaning the inside of the wine glass. I gashed my knuckle open. I probably should have gone and gotten stitches, but I didn't. Um, anyway, it was acting up for a while. I had seen a hand specialist who had said, like, let's give it a couple more months because, you know, major, like, hand injuries like that could take four months to heal. Then I was panicking with you guys because it had started to hurt again. And then just a week or two ago, I realized, I'm like, this almost doesn't hurt at all anymore. Like, I guess it did gradually get better. Like, it doesn't hurt when I open water bottles <laughs> or, like, grip really hard. There's still just a little bit of tenderness there, like, when I try to overextend it too much. But I think it's healing, which is good because <laughs> we were going to be looking at having to do, like, an MRI. And, like, I was terrified they were going to be, like, surgery or and or physical therapy and all of this. And... Like, I don't want to spend that kind of money right now. <laughs> and I also just don't, like, this is my right hand. This is the index finger on my dominant hand. I was just really freaked out about that. But I think the hand doctor thinks that I just, I probably nicked the tendon and the cut was right, like, on the joint. And so I both probably nicked the tendon and really irritated the joint. And that's why it just took a long time to heal. But I think, you know... I think it's okay now, <laughs> which is good because diamond painting <laughs> and all the other things that I need my hands for. Steph, don't say it. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm sorry. I always give my friends a hard time. Um, I love you guys. Uh, all of you that are here. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go um, because we've been chatting for a while, but I think I think I might be able to finish this section before I go to bed tonight. You see, we're getting into, this is like the knight on his horse. The dragon's up there. I haven't gotten to the dragon yet, but like this is just so much confetti and there's a lot of dark colors, but this is a little bit older diamond art club kit. And so it's kind of a breath of fresh air to work with because this was from before they started having major quality issues with their dark drills. I've had very little in the way of quality issues with drills at all on this kit. So thank goodness for that. <laughs> so anyway, if you made it all the way to the end, um, why don't you leave a dragon emoji? Because I'm working on dragon attack <laughs> and dragons are my favorite thing. Uh, yeah, leave a dragon emoji if you made it all the way to the end and let me know how you're doing and what you were working on tonight and... You know, if you are thinking you might participate in the old masters event and for what it's worth, like even if you have, you know, no real intention of like getting a kit and working on it, I, I hope that the videos that we're going to do will still be helpful. Um, and, you know, if you're someone that just likes to learn new things, like they could be really fun to tune into. And the prizes are going to be really, really fun. Like, do it for the community and for the learning, but, like, the prizes are going to be good. <laughs> really, really good. At least we think so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'd love to hear just, yeah, how you're doing, what you're up to, dragon emoji, all the things. So thank you so much for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider subscribing, especially if you made it all the way to the end. You probably will like it here. <laughs> I share lots of videos, mostly, if not entirely related to diamond painting, unboxings, whip and chats, post reviews, how to's, that sort of thing. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up before you click away. And of course, leave all the things in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this evening. I hope you have a really, really wonderful week ahead. Stay safe, be kind to yourself, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, friends.